So just a couple of hours ago, I was watching Lionel Messi lift the trophy for Argentina as they played against Italy in El La Finalissima, whatever the trophy was called. I'm not even sure what it's called, but the celebrations were so beautiful and it, it impacted me. I wanted to go ahead and take an Argentinian team and rebuild it. Now, I've taken River Plate and I've put them into this Serie A. The reason behind that is a third of the Argentinian po population apparently claims to have Italian heritage. And I've seen plenty of footballers throughout history have Argentinian and Italian passports. And uh, there's one specifically right now that is contested. And that is Senesi from Feyenoord. He has the Italian and Argentinian passport, for example. And he has been called up to both national teams at the same time. He chose Arg Argentina and I am choosing Argentina too. River Plate is replacing Venezia and we are rebuilding them to make them great, great in Europe. All right, let's see how this is going to go. I don't even know why I said to make them great, great in Europe. I wanted to say something like, like um, something along the lines of, no, I want to make them one of the great clubs in Europe. It could have been so simple, but I said great, great. Like what? What am I even talking about? Anyways, <laughs> after rambling on for no reason, let's take a look at the team. The team itself is stacked with talents. So many talents that I'm excited about. Julian Alvarez still has a one-year loan left at this club. There's also other loanees into this club like Barco from Atalanta. Not Atalanta, Atlanta. There we go. We also have Quintero who is loaned in, but... Even if those loanies leave our team, we have a couple of massive talents like the likes of Enzo Fernandez here. As we know, Julian Alvarez has been picked up for Manchester City and he's going to be playing alongside Haaland in that attack, which is going to be extremely exciting. Today, I heard some rumors about him being passively loaned out to Marseille and they came out and said no. The boy is going to stay and we're going to see what he can do for Manchester City. And Pep likes to rotate, so let's see what happens there. Also, Enzo Fernandez has been linked to multiple clubs in Europe. Benfica specifically seems to be very positive about, about his signing. And also Manchester United were interested in him. If I was him, I'd definitely go to Benfica personally because that feels like a natural step up. And Benfica bring out some massive talents and move them to big teams. And they tend to be somewhat successful, even though Joao Felix... You know, we'll see what happens there. But obviously, uh, we have seen Davi Nunez this season to be incredible for Benfica and possibly getting a massive move. So we have a lot of players here that I'm very, very excited about. Uh, players like Simon as well. And I want to showcase these players to you guys as we do rebuild this team in Italy to make it a little bit harder on ourselves and obviously try and play in the Champions League as well. I can't wait to dive into this one. Now, the budget itself is only around 16 million, so that is not a lot of money. But one thing we got to do is we got to get this goalkeeper, Armani, who is 34 years old out of this club as soon as possible. We got to bring in someone that can take over that spot for multiple years to come. So that is one of my priorities, as also the right back spot could be. But that guy is still young, so we'll see what happens. I might possibly be looking to get like Gucci off white or you know, uh, Louis Vuitton in goal. We'll see how that goes. But for now, Armani is here and we'll see what we can uh, sort out for that position. Well, good news. We have Thomas Ricci coming in. 17 years old, 71 rated. Amazing pace on him. Good shooting as well. This guy could possibly be the one to pick up Julian Alvarez's position if he leaves. If we turn him into a striker, I'm pretty confident his rating will go up massively. So we got lucky with the Youth Academy this time. Let's take a look at what his rating would be in that striker position. Did he? He goes up by plus one only. Well, that is a bit disappointing, isn't it? I mean, on the right midfield, left midfield position, he isn't that good, but he would be 72 rated now. Could go up to like 75, 76 by next season. And then we could keep on building on him. Julian Alvarez, as I said, is only loaned into this club until Man City decides to get him back into their team, which apparently is going to be around July in real life. So some of the lads had to leave the team, of course. Suarez is gone, Romero, Casco, Perez, Mamana, Armani. All of these lads are gone. And with that money added into the budget, now we have 46 million. Now we're talking. Those 40 plus million have now been used. Acevedo is coming in as a goalkeeper. The Mexican takes over the spot from Armani. No Gucci, no Louis Vuitton. It's Acevedo. And in the right back position, I've gone for Lotomba. The guy looks quality. He's coming in from Nice. 22 years old, 5 foot 10 tall. And as the left back, 
we brought in James Justin. As far as I can remember, he had a long-term injury. So I brought him back now to be able to use him. Very excited about it. I'm pretty confident that he's back playing for Leicester again. I might be wrong here. I might be getting it mi mixed up. But nonetheless, I wanted him in this team. And for the Serie A, I feel like the CDM position is the one that I should possibly focus on. But maybe I'm going to switch this formation to like a 4-3-3 flat and uh, then have Palavecino in the team instead of Zuccolini. So we'll see what happens. I'm pretty confident that this team, as it stands, can get like, let's say, top 10. Yeah, top 10. You know what? Since Barco is going to be going back in like two years, it's a two-year loan, I decided to go in already. Daniel James, yes. The man, the myth, the legend. The Welshman is going to be coming into our team in the next season. I've just signed him before the season ends. Uh, we are still yet to see how the season ends. But nonetheless, I know that Daniel James is going to be a big part of our team. And I'm actually really looking forward to this. Well, lads, the first season is over and I'm seeing an incredible score. We have beaten Juventus 2-1. Not to say that Juventus is incredible. I actually wanted to do a Juventus rebuild, but then I realized I did one back in November. And uh, I feel like now would be a better time to do so because obviously the season ended and they've come fourth. But yeah, we'll see. Let me know if I should do a Juventus rebuild in the comments down below. Uh, the one that I did before was a Del Piero the Juventus rebuild. So let me know. Nonetheless, we're going into it. Ooh. Go on then, lads. Well done, River Plate. 61 points. Only about uh, a few points off the first place. <laughs> AC Milan, 86. Well done. I mean, top 10 was my prediction. Top 6 really wasn't. But we are getting ourselves Europa League football. And that has me excited. Now, again, as I said, Alvarez and Barco are going to be leaving our club. Especially Alvarez. This upcoming season is going to be going already. Barco is still here technically. And um, he will be here for another season. But I'm just wondering, should I let him go to have more playtime for the others? Good thing is that we have Richie, the Youth Academy talent, up to a 77. Which makes him the perfect replacement for Julian Alvarez. He also kind of looks like Julian Alvarez, to be honest with you. So this is just about perfect. 79 pace, 81 shooting, 4 star skill moves, 5 star weak foot already on the youngster and the squad is quite small as you can tell but the midfield has done well and if we go into the individual stats we will see alvarez of course leading the line Ooh, richie go on then that is incredible 14 goals and two assists off the bench love that absolutely love that enzo five and six as predicted the guy's a beast 81 rated at this stage Probably going to be one of the highest potential players in the upcoming FIFA. Possibly. I can see that happen. I don't necessarily know how much his potential is now, but will be a big one next time around. Well, lads, if you play in Europe, you get good cash. 57 million and Daniel James. The Welsh Messi is here. Oh, I'm excited about this one. He's 24 years old at this stage. Barco, I will have to end his loan because I don't want him to take time away from our main players in the squad. And, uh, you know, if he is in a squad here, he will take time away from James and Simon as he's higher rated. So we're going to have to let him go. But before we can do that, we actually need to sign someone because our squad size is too small. After Alvarez, Quintero, all these players have left already. Now we have to re-rebuild the squad once again, which makes it exciting. So I'm thinking we bring in a massive sentiment. I want to bring in another one to add on onto what we already have with the likes of Palavecino here, who's quality, but I feel like he would be better as a backup. And I would like to get someone higher rated than 80, ideally. At least 79 would be nice. So let's see what we can do right now. I need to work my magic. Ideally, I wanted to bring in an Argentinian into the squad, and we have done so. Ezequiel Palacios, one of my favorite talents in FIFA for the past few years, I gotta say, especially like one or two years ago, he was one of my favorites to use because he's so well balanced. The Bayer Leverkusen midfielder hasn't really gotten as much playtime as I would personally love to see him get. Behind the likes of Demir Bay and such, he has been struggling like Arangiz as well. But I do think next season might be his, and I'm really looking forward to it. And I think, I'm not too sure, but I might have seen him in the Argentina national team when they were celebrating the trophy. I might be wrong on this one, though. Don't quote me on it. Now, we have Palavecino, 77 rated. Going to be a great backup now as Palacios takes over that position. That midfield, to me, looks absolutely ridiculous, by the way. I can't wait to see how good that midfield is going to be, especially in gameplay. 
I can imagine these guys being extremely good at dribbling, good at passing and shooting as well, which excites me. So that is the big deal we have done. It cost me 38 million, which is basically nearly our entire budget. So yeah, <laughs> we can't really make any more big signings this season. But what we can do is we can go ahead, look for Barco and terminate his loan. Now he can leave the team. And we do have Martinez requesting a transfer. Now that changes everything. After great performances alongside Hintega and Endika, Tuta from Eintracht Frankfurt has managed to pick up the Europa League trophy. It is a competition that we're taking part in with River Plate this season. And I thought, you know what? I would love to have Tuta in this squad. He's a quality young centre-back that has a bright future ahead of him. I'm very excited about him. He's coming in to replace Martinez, who was actually the younger centre-back in between the two that we had. Diaz is 27, but he's okay for now. Tuta takes over that spot. Diaz has a better weak foot, so let's put him over there. Tuta coming in with good pace, good defending, and good physicality. A perfect match for River Plate. Even though he's Brazilian, he can play in this Argentinian side. Well, lads, we have two victories and a draw in the month of May as we finish the season and we move up one spot only. But a lot more points than last season. I believe last season we finished on 61. This season it's 77 and just two more points and we could have been in that second spot. That is rough. But we have the chance to qualify for Champions League football here. And that is very nice. We've had plenty of draws, it seems like. We have as many losses as the first place team, which is five. And if we look into the team itself, well, it is beautiful. By the way, isn't this guy's name Justin James or James Justin? That is hilarious because we now have James Justin on the left wing. Nonetheless, uh, let's move on. Richie, 84 rated. Simon 83, De La Cruz, Fernandez, Palacios. That midfield is looking fire. Diaz, Tuta, both on the 80, which is impressive. The right back is up to an 83. Acevedo up to an 83. And even the bench is looking all right, especially Palavecino up to a 79. So this has been a quality season for growth. And it has been a quality season for Julian Alvarez's replacement, Thomas Ritchie, 33 and 8 assists unbelievable simon 19 and 17 as well for the right wing with barely any pace to his name but hey he's doing it de la cruz 10 in 4 james with the 10 in 1 enzo with the 7 in 7 as he usually does and palavicino coming up with lots of play time there quality season for the entire squad making me very much looking forward to the year with Champions League football and Champions League money. Gimme. Well, lads, despite the team being good, 93 million doesn't really hurt. I mean, 92 technically, but you know, I like money and money likes me apparently as well. So 87 million right there, actually. Let's play with the wage budget a little bit. I could make one massive transfer for the team. What position would that be? Uh I actually don't know. Sometimes you got the money, but you don't want to upgrade. Now, Diaz is gone. The centre-back that was on the younger side has now left the squad because... No, not the younger side. Actually, the centre-back that was on the younger side had to be used for the swap deal of Tuta. He requested a transfer. The 29-year-old, voice crack, had to leave the team now. Salisu is joining us. Left-footed centre-back for the left centre-back position. And I also spent some cash on Unai C. Mon, because Acevedo didn't look like growing anymore. So obviously that's an issue. Can't have an 83 rated goalkeeper. If you want to compete in Champions League football, we need the best of the best. So Unai Simon, the Spanish national team keeper, is taking over from now on. As I casually watch Dr. Disrespect run through The Last of Us. Have you guys played Last of Us? Uh, it's a good game. I tried to play it once, but then I don't know. For some reason, I lost interest after a little while. The only single player games that I seem to be able to pull through all the way it's like God of War. I love God of War. I've been playing that since the first game when I was way younger. And uh, I can't wait for the next one. Man, it's going to be banging. Nonetheless, here we are. Why do I keep saying that word these days, by the way? Anyway, we move. We are here now with 60 million in the budget at the end of the season, guys. Look at this. James 85. Justin James. James Justin. Love that left-hand side of our team. Richie. Hey, Julian Alvarez. Where are you at, pal? We got a better talent than you. Uh, Simon up to an 86. The midfield is looking very good. I like that. 
Both centre-backs now an 84. Lotomba up to an 85. And Simon up to an 87. That is what I love to see. Great improvements in the team. But where did we end up? What? Oh, wow. That is unexpected. I did not see that coming. Okay. Well, um, we are fifth. We are back into Europa League football. Uh, I wonder why. I wonder how that came about. Who has done well? Richie has done well. Palacio has done really well. I gotta say, Simon and Daniel James not necessarily performing to the levels that I would like to see here for both my wingers. I need them to be more involved into the game. You can't let Richie do everything by himself. I feel bad for the kid. Incredible growth. Plus, plus six. He was a potential to be special player, so congratulations on that but that seems to be the issue we are not scoring enough goals with our attackers apart from our striker let's try and fix that so before the next season even begins i had to make a deal guys i'm sorry the welsh messi is gone daniel james had to leave and we are now bringing in the lebron james of football christian pulisic takes over the left wing spot for us i think he will probably be getting a bunch more goals than daniel james did around the same age range, so that shouldn't really play a big role. In this new season, I had a budget of around 90 million. I've gone ahead and spent it on the bench. Turam is taking over. One reason is he can play down the wings, and the second one is he could play striker if necessary. And then I've brought in a proper striker here as a backup as well, Kaspar Dolberg. I think these signings will definitely propel us back into the top four with immediate effect. I gotta say, though, I am somewhat expecting that this team does win the Europa League now. Well, it wouldn't be a rebuild if someone didn't get sold due to a release clause. Nice. Yes, my favorite. Ugh. The transfer window is closed as well now. I got to go half a year without a proper center midfielder. Palavasino will have to do. Alrighty, before the time goes ahead and someone might become more expensive, I've gone for a 150 million transfer for Valverde. Why did I go for Valverde? Because De La Cruz, who left, is from Uruguay. I wanted another one from Uruguay. Uruguay. And there you go. Federico Valverde, the Champions League winner, is here to take over. As Valverde joins the team, I have to let go of Palavecino. Sadly, we had no more money in the club and I needed to sort out the transfer, uh, the wages of the players. And on top of it, I honestly gotta admit, I forgot that free agents existed in FIFA. I, <laughs> I've, I've been doing these rebuilds so much. And at certain points, as you guys might remember, in the earlier states of our rebuilds, we did tend to bring in free agents here and there, especially for the bench. And I kind of stopped doing it. Let me know in the comments down below, guys. Should I start using free agents more often again? Because it adds another level. Sometimes you find some incredible hidden gems in there that are ridiculously rated. And it makes it a little bit more fun, I guess. But yeah, I had to bring in Bosniak as a replacement for Palavecino, who is gone to fix the wages of the team. Seems like we are in the semi-finals of the Europa League, beating Arsenal one time, beating them twice up against Barcelona in the final. This could as well be the Champions League final, mate. What kind of opponents are these? I mean, Arsenal in the semi-final. Let's not joke ourselves here. That is not necessarily Champions League level, but nonetheless, here we are with Barcelona. So Barcelona, how's it gonna go? It's a win. We have won the Europa League and we have come second this season. Only four points, my friends. Four points we are behind. Bio Monte Calcio. I cannot wait to win the Serie A. I feel like it's been too long already. 2025. I mean, look at that team. How is this team not capable of winning the Serie A yet? It has to win. Richie is 96 rated, bro. Now, let's see. Have these guys on the wings done better? Richie 27 and 3, lovely. Pulisic, exactly what I wanted from him. 21 and 12. Simon, he's 88 rated, only 22 years old, but only 7 and 8 on right wing. I don't know about that, you know. I'm I'm not too happy with that. It slowly pushes me into a direction where I want to have a winger that scores goals. And he just might not be that guy. He was never really supposed to be a winger. Apparently, if Enzo Fernandez leaves, he drops back into the midfield. So I don't know how to feel about this. 
I might make a massive move for a right wing in the next season. And I need someone that actually can score goals because Pulisic has proven he can do it. Even though he only has two or only plus one shooting than Simon. That's actually kind of surprising. Hmm. I wonder what makes the difference. Medium, medium work rates. High, high work rates. Weird one. I don't know what it is, but we're back into Champions League football. We have won the Europa League and we came in second. I feel like this next season could be huge. Now I turned on Nations League. Netherlands smashing Belgium at their home ground 3-0 at the moment as I'm recording this. And France has just conceded against Denmark. Denmark looking strong out there in these minutes that I've been able to watch. But we have gone ahead and made a transfer, guys. Ferran Torres, I think... And I'm going to go out on a limb here. I think Ferran Torres next season for Barcelona is going to be extremely successful. Something in my head just says it's going to work out for him. I hope for the best for him. He obviously moved across from Manchester City to Barcelona in the initial first half of the season. Had a lot of chances missed, but also managed to score plenty. I think next season he's going to do even better. Ferran Torres, good luck in this team now with River Plate and I honestly think this team itself as it stands now just looks ridiculous and as I'm finished here with that transfer I still have 49 million to spend I might go ahead and buy myself some players for the bench a 4-1 victory against Hoffenheim in the first leg second leg 1-0 give me give me the best out of Europe don't be giving me Hoffenheim and stuff here we go Man City 2-1 in your face give me more 3-1 all right now PSG. Can we get past them? I don't know. I have a bad feeling. 2-0 win. Yes. Champions League finalists. Let's go. Get in, lads. Beautiful. That is what I was expecting. River Plate is now in the Champions League final. The joy of being able to put these types of teams over across Europe to test out their might. I love it. And the team itself, 97 rated Richie. Hey, no matter... Oh, wait. Den Denmark just scored. 2-1. Denmark is leading against France. Oh, wow. 89th minute. Unreal. It's the same guy again. He came off the bench and scored two goals. Cornelius, I believe he plays for Trabzon in Turkey, who actually won the championship this season. Congratulations. Pulisic, 92. Torres, 91. Valverde, Fernandez, Palacios looking good. Justin, Salisu, Tuta, Lotomba, and Simon. Just an amazing team right there. And even the bench is somewhat acceptable. I have brought in one more free agent in the Stefano in this uh, season. But I want to see. Have all three performed? Yes, they have. See, this is what it's all about. Oh, no. Saliba lost the battle there. I'm just seeing the goal as well. Saliba actually was doing pretty well. But Cornelius scores from a ridiculous angle. Nonetheless, we have Richie with the 31 and 2, Pulisic 23 and 10, Torres with the 22 and 17. I told you this guy's class. And Dolberg off the bench with 10 goals. 10 Denmark players. See, there you go. Guys, this was a joy to build up. Now we get to test it against the likes of Atletico Madrid. I hate playing against Oblak. It's a new day, and I gotta say, this Atletico Madrid team looks very interesting to me it looks very strong they're playing five at the back which is going to be tough to get past love their midfield love the attack and honestly love the defense i'm actually looking forward to this who needs julian alvarez when you have a 97 rated striker up top richie is taking on this atletico madrid team now along with his teammates river plate a massive club over in Argentina, along the likes of Boca Juniors and such. Obviously, there are huge rivalries going on there as well. So, at times, I wanted to buy certain players, but then realized they're playing for Boca. So, I uh, didn't necessarily go after it. But yeah, talking about rivalries, guys. Have you ever been to a derby match? And if you have, what is like your fondest memory of a derby match? Because the atmosphere in those types of games... But the rivalries are massive. They are just so good. I love it. But here we go. Let's see if we can win. If we can win. <laughs> Beat Atletico Madrid. Across to Palacios. Palacios giving too much space here. We got to try it when they give me that much space. But then I forget. I keep forgetting. I'm up against Oblak. I have to be basically in goal to be able to score one. Nice interception. 
Palacios. Towards Richie. Richie. He's a bit tall, huh? Good pass. Across. Make that run. Diagonal run, please. Go on. Palacios. Cuts inside. And it is Bastoni paying attention. Well done. We have someone at the near post here. It's Tuta. Tuta. You can win that. I trust in you. We get it back to Palacios' feet. Over to Richie. The striker takes his shots. It's not green timed. It's too easy for Oblak. Skamaka brings it inside. Keeper, stand up. Let's go. Well done. Well done. That was a big chance for Atletico. We do well with our goalkeeper to get to it. Across to Torres. Torres. See certain runs unfolding. Richie gets that. It's a beautiful pass. But it's too easy. Oblak is just perfectly positioned, but makes a big, big mistake. And he has to dive for it again. Man, that's well done, I guess. We're going to try and hit this at the near post because there's a small man defending it. Tuta won't get to it. We bring it back to Palacios. Palacios sees the run of his teammate. It's a beautiful run. But sadly, we are still not rewarded for our efforts. Good pass across to Torres. Ferran Torres. Palacios. Richie. Richie. Oh, go on, mate. I just want to score one of these. Just one. Is that too much to ask for? Good pass across. Pulisic. Christian Pulisic. Now, the LeBron James of football has to do something here about this game. Richie. Being given a lot of space here. He sees, he sees that little spot between the defenders. I'm going to try and get this on top of Richie's head. Because Tuta ain't doing anything. Richie. There he is. Near post. And then Tuta. Nope. Across to Enzo. Enzo can bang it from range. And he tries. I've seen this guy score multiple goals from range. Just this sec. This, like, last, last three months, I guess I should say. He's unbelievable. Richie. Well done. Here we go. Now we got some space. That's the space I've been wanting. And I've been looking for it. And I just cannot get past Oblak and his posts, man. Ooh, another big steal. Through the legs, please. Get past. And let's go. Palacios. The Bay Leverkusen midfielder jumps into the River Plate squad. Finds himself in the perfect spot to score. And he does so. The long shots didn't work against the likes of Oblak. But in the end, we do get lucky due to the high pressure. Bad defending there from Atletico Madrid down the wings. And River Plate managed to put it into the back of the net. Oblak is finally beaten. Gonna make one change. Two ties tired. Let's bring on the youngster, Di Stefano, taking over in right center back. Ooh, that could be very dangerous. Joao Felix, though, luckily stopped. I gotta say, this defense has been incredible. Go on, LeBron James. You can do this. Yes, yes. Christian Pulisic. Near post. Yes, mate. Do the unexpected. My guy could have gone for a shot to the far post, but I think Oblak speculated on that one. Against Oblak, you got to do things that he doesn't expect. Well done against Bastoni there. Holding him off. Great pass, by the way. But what a strike on top. Get in, LeBron James. To the GOAT. What a finish. Let's go. We are now struggling a little bit. Don't want to concede. Really do not want to concede. And we do well there. And it's an even better pass. And here goes LeBron James on another run. Can he beat Bastoni to it? This time he's not capable of doing so. But my God, this team is so good. Honestly, lads. I've had a great time playing with this squad. And I would love to not concede. I want to keep this clean sheet. Come on, don't take this away from me, referee. Blow the whistle. Let's go, James Justin or Justin James or JJ. Whatever you want to call him. Let's go. It's done. The trophy belongs to... A river plate. Richie is shaking hands with his teammates, but there's only one man to lift this trophy, and it is Enzo Fernandez, the original of the squad and one of the biggest talents in world football when it comes to midfielders. I'm excited to see what's going to happen with a bunch of these players that are at River Plate that have really high ceilings and could be moving to big European squads. River Plate have done really well themselves with this generation. And uh, I hope to see a bunch of them 
get to lift some of these trophies one day. Thank you guys so much for watching. I personally had a lot of fun recording this one. I hope you had a lot of fun watching it, even though I've been in the bottom right corner for the gameplay section. I'm sorry about that. Just realized it. Have a good day, guys. Take care and peace.